gonna run some stringers for you guys. So what I like to do is, I mean, it's a pretty steep angle, but depending on, you know, the overlap, that's just when you're gonna tweak it this way or that way. Most of the time you can kind of just hold it in there and then go. But if you're not overlapping it enough, then you can kind of turn the rod. But if you're overlapping it too much, maybe you can kind of just go in straight. But you want to overlap the same amount throughout the whole bead. Uh, let's run some beads. Went ahead and ran a couple. So you don't want to point the rod directly at the side of the weld because you're going to get more than 50% coverage and you're probably going to have undercut. So you just want to start a little bit away from the weld. And then right when you right when you strike up, you're going to see how fat your puddle is going to be. And if, once you get that 50% coverage mark, that's when you want to start moving. You want to keep everything the same. Keep the same rod angle. I mean, everything exactly the same from start to finish. And then once you practice these, you get a bunch, then you can start moving on to horizontal, vertical. But flat stringers are very important, especially when you're first starting off. Let's run some more. All right guys, same thing. You just want that 50% overlap. Like I said, you don't want to be pointing directly into it. You just want to lay that rod right on the side of this puddle. And you'll see automatically the puddle will burn 50% right over the next one. And you just want to go straight. You just want to keep dragging it. Don't fall, don't move your hand. Once you see it covered perfectly and you see the puddles looking beautiful, don't change anything. Just keep dragging, make everything consistent and the same throughout the whole entire weld. That's basically how you do stringers. And once you master this, like I said, then you can go to horizontal, then you can go to vertical, then overhead. And that's basically every single stringer is ran the same. All right, guys, same thing. We're just laying this rod right on the side of the last bead, and we're letting the rod and the puddle do everything itself. I'm not manipulating. I'm not doing any circles. I'm just burning it right here, watching it cover 50%, and then I'm just moving. I'm not doing circles. I'm not whipping it. I'm just watching the puddle burn, doing the same thing throughout the whole bead, not changing anything up. They should look like this every single time. All right, let's burn one last rod. All right, so one thing I forgot to mention is when you're striking your arc, don't start moving the, you know, the bead or the puddle until you get the puddle the size that you want. So when you strike your arc, wait. Whenever it gets to the size you want, then you can start moving. And when you start moving, try to keep the puddle the same exact size throughout the whole thing. That's how you, that's how you can 
know your travel speed right right there because if you if you start going then you get your puddle the size you want then you start moving fast and then the puddle gets skinnier that means your travel speed is too fast so when you strike your arc and you get that puddle the size you want move and do everything the same to keep that puddle the same size throughout the whole thing that's how you can know your travel speed because if you if you're going if you strike your arc and you get the puddle the size you want and then you start going too fast and then slow down to get back to what you want and then you got go too fast again then your puddle is going to be big and then skinny and big and skinny and it's just not going to be uniform so if you want everything to look exactly the same you have to keep the puddle the same exact size and same exact travel travel speed throughout the whole thing so once you get that down everything should come out looking pretty good like i said i know i'm not the best but these are just the basics you know once you take the basics then you can Learn better ways to do them yourselves, but this is pretty much what you want your stringer beads to look like.